your audio and launch meeting. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go find out. Okay. Uh, all right, I'll go down here and see if there's anybody on. Mark is on. Mark uh, is on. Hey, Mark, can you hear me? It does say recording. That's good. I think I have one student that's listening. We're kind of starting late because it's... Uh, it's 10 o'clock and we were supposed to start. Yeah, I will, especially if I. If, OK, bye. Hey, uh, Mark, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Oh, good. We we're starting kind of late today. There was a problem with Zoom. Are you aware of that? Yes, sir. I saw the announcement. Okay. Well, I'm proud of you. If you figured that out, you're a better man than I am. All right, let's see. Can you see the board there? Yeah. Um maybe if you move it a little more to the right a little more to the right how, yeah, how about that mark that's good that's good all right excellent uh if i can just get rid of this picture of me over here well, i don't want that on there do i uh okay well we're kind of starting late and let's see if there's any more customers here uh, oh yeah hey look at this we have jesus mark and jackson now now the beautiful thing is we will record this and the others can watch it uh tonight we'll, we'll try to get it we'll try to get it on there tonight so good deal looks like we have a class maybe some more will show up but I'm all for going ahead with our uh, class. How, how about you guys? Uh, all those in favor, say aye. Nobody's saying anything. Uh, maybe I better unmute everybody. OK, all those are in favor of going ahead with our class, say aye. Sure. <laughs> well, there's one. We only have three uh, students right now be, because there was a problem with Zoom, but I sent a uh, announcement. Now let's pick on Mark. Mark, did you read that announcement? What did it say? It said that Zoom was temporarily not working. Good. Well, it, it, yeah. Good. But I think it's working now, and, and we're going to go ahead. Now, there's only three of you guys, but we're, we're talking three of the best. Do you have any questions before uh, I get started on today's lesson? Any of you have any comments or questions? No, sir. Well, okay, well, let's, let's rock and roll then. We are going to rock and roll. Now, the uh, topic is uh, Cartesian coordinates. But you guys know what that is. That's just X and Y. It's just X and Y that we're familiar with. But now, I don't know if you guys are up on this radius of curvature business. Now let's talk about that and then we'll work a problem dealing with X and Y and uh, the radius of curvature. Now there's a uh, symbol for radius of curvature. It's a Greek letter rho, R-H-O. 
Let me see where it is in the Greek alphabet. Let's see, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, z, omicron, pi, rho. It's the 17th letter of the Greek alphabet. How about that, rho? And there's a formula for it in the front of your book. It goes like this. Now, I want you to, if you have a book, <clears throat> I want you to flip to the uh, inside front flap of your book and you'll see that. And I got that wrong too. I got that wrong. No, I didn't. I got it right. I got that right. That's the uh, radius of. Uh, curvature equation. Yeah, there it is. I'm looking at it. It's in the front of your book. <clears throat> now, you guys have all had calculus. In calculus, they have something called curvature. So you've had this before in calculus. Maybe you don't remember it, but but I'll tell you what curvature is. It's uh, they use a symbol C, I think. It goes like this. There it is. There, there's the symbol for curvature. Hey, do you notice it's just like rho, only it's upside down. Rho and curvature are reciprocals. In other words, uh, rho is one over the curvature, and the curvature is one over rho. They're just reciprocals. All right. Great. Now, now let me try to explain what the heck uh, they mean. Here, I'm going to erase curvature. You, but you could you could look that up in your uh, calculus book if you wanted to. But let's suppose you have. You see what we're studying right now is two dimensions. We're in. 2D. Two dimensions, guys. So suppose you had a uh, an airplane or whatever, and it was curving kind of like like that. Can, can you visualize an airplane coming up here and then diving a little bit and going, diving down and then pulling out of a dive and doing that? <clears throat> well, see, the radius of curvature is always to the inside of the curve. Like if you're doing this one here, it would be about like that. There's your radius of curvature. 
And see, if you made a circle, if you made a circle, With, with that uh, with that radius, it would just fit right in there. It would fit in there, and that's why they call it the radius of curvature. You don't really have a circle, you understand. You have a curve. Now, if if you did this, if you pull out of a dive, the, the radius of curvature is smaller. See, there's your radius of curvature there. And what you have now is a, is a circle. I bet you guys already understand all this and I'm just, <clears throat> I'm just boring you out of your gourds here, explaining this business about radius of curvature. But, but you notice, the radius of curvature is smaller there and the curve does fit pretty good of the circle right there but the radius of curvature is smaller but the curvature is bigger see this has more curvature and this is a smaller curvature you understand smaller curvature uh bigger bigger curvature but but bigger radius of curvature smaller radius of curvature. See, they're reciprocals. See, the rho uh, is equal to one over the curvature. And you always draw the radius of curvature to the inside uh, of your uh, curve. Ta-da, you got it. We understand that. Okay, well, I'm ready to work a problem. Now, do you have any question? Anyone have a question before we uh, work a problem? Now, let's see, we're, we started late. So to be fair, you guys paid your money for tuition. We should, we should go over a half hour, don't you think, to, to make it right? See what, normally, normally we go from 9.30 to 11, roughly. So we should go to 11, I guess 11.30, hmm? is that right? Yeah, probably. Come on, somebody asked me a question. Let, let's, go to, let's go to one of my uh, excellent students. Gosh, hey, we got another customer. Ashley just joined us. Hello, Ashley. Did, did, Ashley, unmute and tell me, did you have trouble logging on to zoom this morning yeah i tried a couple of times and it didn't work but then i just tried again and it worked for me bless your heart i i did the same thing ashley zoom was down okay it was down and so blame blame zoom don't blame me okay okay zoom was done now i did send an announcement ashley did you look at the announcements yes oh okay so i i sent an announcement and told the students that zoom was having trouble and i didn't know whether i was going to be able to have a meeting with you guys today or not but it looks like we are and a lot of you didn't show up but we'll put, we'll put it on uh, youtube just a minute i lost my uh, Something here. Yeah, there it is. Okay, well, uh, we just talked about radius of curvature. Do we have any comments or questions before I uh, work a problem? All right, well, the one I want to work is. Uh, mm, Let's work 12, 141. That looks good. That'll take us a while. It's, it's a wonderful problem. So say goodbye to all this stuff. And we're going to work. Uh, 
We don't need that either. I need the room, see? We're going to work 12. One forty one. If I can find it, I don't know what page it's on, but let me look. Maybe you could find it for me. Okay, twelve one forty one. Okay, I'm still looking here. All right, I finally found it. Okay, we've got an airplane and it's going 150 feet per second. Okay, so we're going to put the airplane here, uh, artist's rendition of the airplane. There you go. And it's going 150 feet per second. All right, and the package is dropped. And the package, uh, oh, by the way, the airplane is at uh, 1,500 feet. And the package, they drop the package and it goes like that. And we'll say that this distance here is X and the Y axis is here. Let's see what else do we know. Let me read this. It says, uh, they want to know something about when the package is released at A. We'll call this A. And this we'll call B. They want to know uh, the normal and tangential components of acceleration. All right. Well, uh, here's the stuff they want to know. They want to know, oops. The tangential component of acceleration and the normal component of acceleration at A. And at B, they want, eh, I don't know if there's room there, but they want to know the tangential component and the normal component of acceleration at B. That's what they want to know. Well, the trouble is, I haven't told you anything about tangential and normal, I don't think. So now's as good a time as any. Uh, I think I was mentioning a little bit about the tangential normal coordinate system. Let's see. Uh, it, it has unit vectors. See the XY coordinate system. X, Y has unit vectors I and J. The I and J, I know you guys know about I and J. But see the, uh, the normal tangential unit system, uh, yeah, unit system, uh, it's got uh, unit vectors, but they have a tangential unit vector and a normal unit vector. See, see these are unit vectors. Uh, what they mean by unit vectors is they're one unit long, but they don't have any dimensions. See, I doesn't have meters or pounds or anything. It's just dimensionless. And, and some books use a different symbol. Some books use an E, T, and a U, T, uh, or an E, T, or I mean an E, N. 
for their unit vectors. But this book here uses a little letter U for the, the unit vectors. And the tangential unit vector is always in the direction of the motion. And the normal unit vector is always perpendicular. These are perpendicular. Did you know that? I, J, and K, if you're in three dimensions, they're all perpendicular. And the tangential and normal, that's the name of them. Tangential. Nor and normal unit vectors, they're, they're perpendicular to one another. And the normal unit vector is always to the inside of your curve. So here, let me, let me show you. <clears throat> Let me show you where they are. A lot of times I like my unit vectors in a different color. I really like green, but I don't think I have any green. Uh, I got some blue. Pretend, pretend this blue is green. That'll work. Well, see right here, we'll have the, that's blue. I don't know if you can tell, but that's the tangential unit vector. And here's the normal unit vector. There we go. The tangent, tangential unit vector is always in the direction of the motion or the velocity. And the normal unit vector is always perpendicular to the tangential unit vector to the inside of your curve. Now, when it gets down here, the tangential unit vector is doing this. There's the tangential unit vector. And the normal vector, normal unit vector is perpendicular. And it's doing that. I probably should draw that like this. There we go. There's the tangential unit vector. There's the normal unit vector to the inside of the curve. See, it's still curving. You can't tell it much because the, uh, the radius of curvature is very big and the curvature is very small. Here, the ra radius of curvature is smaller and the curvature is bigger. I don't know if that made any sense, but well, we tried. Now let's find the radius of curvature at A and B. That would be fun to do. But to do that, you have to take uh, the derivative. See, we, we need the derivative of uh, y versus x. So here we go. We're going to do some algebra now. The, the lucky thing is we have constant acceleration. It's gravity. And in, in the x direction, there is no acceleration. It just moves. Well, the airplane dropped a package, all right? It goes 150 feet per second at a constant speed. There is no acceleration. It doesn't speed up. The package does not have little jets on it that make it go faster and faster and faster. It just, they just drop the package. And it goes at a constant speed in the x direction. Ah, but in the y direction, it starts off with, with no speed at all. And then it goes faster and faster and faster as, it, um, as gravity accelerates it downward. So we're going to write some equations. Now here's the uh, x equation. In the x direction, we have. 150 feet per second times the time. That's it. And now that comes from this equation here. Delta x equals V sub O T uh, plus one half A T squared. And we can use that because the acceleration 
is zero in the X. And so put an X there if you like. This term is zero, you don't have to worry about it. And since it started with X is zero, delta X is just equal to X. So X is equal to 150T. Da -da, and there you have it. Now let's do the Y equation. Well, in the Y equation, we're going to do the same doggone thing, only, only this is going to be V0 Y T plus one half A Y T squared. Remember those equations with the skulls and crossbones that I showed you last time? We can use them because we have constant acceleration. The acceleration in the Y is gravity though. And there is no, in this case, there's no in, initial, how do you say that word? Initial. There's no initial velocity in the Y. So you, what you'll have is Y minus the initial value of Y, which is 1500 feet equals one half but see accelerations uh, not minus 32.2 t squared i almost wrote 9.81 almost but when you're dealing in feet acceleration of gravity is 32.2 so now if you put this what is it 1500 to start with over on the right hand side of your equation Here's your equation for y. It's 1500 feet minus, what's half of 32.2? Is that 16.1? I think it is. 16.1 t squared. What do you think? Is that right? It looks pretty good. Yeah. Okay. So there's your y. Now we're going to do some algebra. We're going to take this equation here and we're going to write t is x over 150. Can you make it from here to here? I hope so. And we're going to plug that t in. So here's what you'll have now. You'll have y is 1500 minus 16.1 x squared over 150 squared. I hope I didn't lose you. See, t is x over 150, so I just squared it. Now let me clean that up and write it pretty. So I'm get my calculator here. And then we're going to find the uh, radius of curvature. That'd be fun. So here we go. I'm going to go 1500. Yeah, all right. So what y is equal to 1500 minus 16.1 divided by 150 squared. Well, it's a goofy number, but I can't help it. It's 0 0.000. Seven one a whole bunch of fives uh, x squared. So there's your function of y. Now, now to get the uh, radius of curvature, what you have to do is we're going to need dy dx we can do that we all went to school the Der derivative of the constant there is just zero and the derivative of that i can do that you just multiply by two right let me do that times two all right uh, times two here's what i'm getting i'm getting negative point zero zero one four three a whole bunch of ones is that is that what you get when you do that 
So you take two times that, x to the one. Whoops, wait a minute, I forgot my x. There we go. There's the uh, first derivative with respect to x. Now, now, if I make a mistake here, you sing. I want to hear you shout it out. Let's get the thing right. OK, now, oh, gee, I'm running out of space here. I need the second derivative. I think I can squeeze it in right here. We need the second derivative. I think there's just barely enough room to write it in. Here. OK. Well, when you take the derivative of that, I just get this here. How about you? Ta -da, and, I, and I'm through by Jove. I've, I've got the second. Now we can get the uh, uh, radius of curvature at A, and we can get it at B. OK. If anybody tuned in uh, late to our class, we're doing problem 12, 141, and we're trying to uh, find the radius of curvature. Let's see if there's anybody that, that came. Jackson, yay, we have Jackson with us. Engage, bless your hearts. Ashley and Mark, so we have four wonderful students right now. Well, good. Well, uh, there's a little room over here. Maybe I can do it over here. OK, now we're going to get the radius of curvature at A. Here's A. And the radius of curvature at A is going to be 1 plus the first derivative. Well, wait a minute now. At A, x is 0, isn't it? Yeah. It's 0. x is 0 at A. So you go 1 plus 0 squared to the 3 halves divided by the absolute value of blah, 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 blah. Point. We don't need the minus sign, do we? Because the absolute value just makes it 0 0.001431411. 0, 0, 1, 1. Is that what it says? Yeah. Hey, I can handle that. I'm going to do that on my calculator. Here goes. Uh, you do it. I'm going to call on one of you guys. And I want to see if you can get the radius of curvature at A. So here I'm going to do it. And you do it. And we'll see what happens. OK. I've got the radius of curvature at, at A. And I'm going to go to one of my wonderful students here. And Jackson. You came in a little late there, but we're all late because the uh, Zoom was down. Uh, unmute, Jackson. Uh, did did you uh, did you read my announcement, Jackson? That the Zoom was down. Earth calling, Jackson. Earth calling, Jackson. Come in, Jackson. Earth calling Jackson. Mm, he's not going to answer me. He's getting his cup of coffee or whatever he's doing. Uh, okay, well, I'll pick on somebody else. Hey, how about you, Mark? Mark, did you did you get an answer for the radius of curvature at A? I think so. Yeah, what'd you get? 698.8. That's what I got. 698.8. Uh, what, what are the units, Mark? Got to have units. That's a good Without question. units, we don't know what we're talking about. 
What do you think the units would be of that radius of curvature, Mark? Well, it's a radius, so. No, it's not radians. No, it's, it's, it's a, a radi radius of curvature. Radius. So it's a radius, so feet? So, what'd you say? Is it feet? Yeah, good going, it's feet. We now know that the radius of curvature here at A is 698 something feet. Okay, now let's do the radius at B. Here we go. We're going to do the radius at B. Now, how do you do that? Uh, well, I kind of have a problem here. Hmm. I think we can solve this though. Because see, at B, won't Y be zero? I mean, when that when that package is, comes down here and hits the ground, Y is how high it is. Well, it's right on the ground. The Y is zero. So if you made this Y zero, we could solve for this value of X. Let's do that together. <clears throat> Put a zero here. Make that zero. <clears throat> and then solve this for uh, for x. I'm going to do it. I want you to do it. Well, I got a value of x. You see this value of x right here? It goes from here to here, where the package. The, the package hits the ground. And, and I know what that value of X is. I got one, four, four, seven point nine feet. Okay. So now we know how far it went when it hit on the it in the x direction when it hits the ground and see since we know the x value now we can find the the derivative dy dx take that value of x and plug it in and let's get the first derivative here goes i'm going to do it i'm plugging it in now Did, did you get a minus 2.072? Now, I wonder what the units on that is. What are the units of dy dx? Uh, let me go to one of my wonderful students here. Pick on somebody different. Uh, Ashley, Ashley. First of all, Ashley, did you get 2.072 when you? Yes. Yay, good going. Now, Ashley, this is a tough one. What are the units? What do I put in here for the units of that negative 2.072, Ashley? What do you think? Is it feet per second? Nope. Guess again. I'll give you three guesses. We're, well, what I'm asking Ashley is, we found the first derivative with respect to x now, dy dx, we found it. And it's equal to this minus two point blah, blah, blah. But I'm asking Ashley, what the unit, what are the units of that first derivative? Try again, you got two more guesses, Ashley. She's thinking. Give up, Ashley, do you give up? Uh oh, have I lost Ashley? Come on, Ashley, what do you think? Uh, 
I haven't lost you, have I? Say something, Ashley, say something, anything. Oh no, I think I've lost Ashley. Maybe she's muted or something. Okay, well, let's ask somebody else then. Let's see. See, I think you learn this way. Uh, uh oh. <laughs> Ashley's not on there. She left me. She got disgusted and left. Uh, Jackson. Jackson, what do you think the units are for that first derivative? Jackson? I hope I didn't make Ashley mad. What about it, Jackson? What's the units on that? What do I do, mute everybody? Say something, Jackson, say something. What's this little symbol here? That... Oh, well, I'm down to two students. I think I've lost some students. Is this that boring? How about Mark? Mark, what do you think the units are? Um, dy over dx, so is it just feet over feet? That's correct. And if you have feet over feet, what 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 is that? It's just they cancel out, and it's no they unit. They cancel out. The units are nothings. You don't have any units. It's dimensionless. You, you see that there with nothing in it? That's the units. The units are nothing. It's. If you wanted to write feet over feet, that would be okay. But feet over feet is just nothing. They cancel out. Okay. Well, uh, we now know dy dx. Now, and we know we know everything. We can get the uh, radius of uh, curvature at a and b. So, uh, oh, we already did a. Now we're going to get the radius of curvature at B. Here we go. We're going to take uh, one plus the first derivative, which we just got, and square it. Now I know it's negative, but when you square it, you get a positive. So I'm going to square it. Here goes. It's a one plus four point two nine blah 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 to the three halves divided by the second derivative with respect to x, but now it's it's the absolute value. See, in the denominator, look look in the flap of your book. It says absolute value, doesn't it? So you don't need a minus sign. It's one, four, three, one, one, one. Okay, now we're going to get the uh, radius of curvature at B. Gosh, I'm down to just my two faithful students. Everybody else split. All right. I want you to plug this in and get the uh, radius of curvature at B for me. Go ahead. Well, I got an answer, but I'm just down to two of my wonderful students. I want to know what you guys got. For the radius of curvature at B, I want you to tell me what you got. Go ahead, either one of you. I'll, I'll wait. I need the radius. Of, go ahead. 8,509.95. Well, that might be right, and I might be wrong, but that's not what I got. Do it again. I, I could be wrong. 
I mean, here, here's what you have to do. You have to take one plus 4.2 blah, blah, blah to the three halves, right? And you have to divide by 0 0.00143111. Do it again. I could be wrong. Maybe I should do it again. I'm going to do it again. Now, now, now tell me what you got again. 8,509.89. I think you're right and I'm wrong. I think you're right and I'm wrong. Let me do it one more time. Proud of you. Yeah, I goofed up. I don't know what I did. Yeah, it's 8,000. 509.9 feet. Was that Mark that just said that? Was that Mark? Yes, sir. Mark, you were right. And uh, uh, I'll, I'll give you a little happy happy thank you point up here in the corner good going now i want you to notice that the radius of curvature is eight thousand here at b but at a it's only uh 600 or 698. boy there's a big difference here let me uh, let me try to draw that for you what, what they're saying is if you made a circle here that circle would be pretty small. Uh, the radius of the circle would be 698, about like that. But, but the radius of curvature at B is much larger and it would be a, a huge circle. There's no way I can even get it on my, on my board. The radius would be way the heck out here someplace. And, and it would go like this. I think I would run off, I would run off the board too. But it's perpendicular to the path. I do know that and I have the radius of curvature. And now we can get the uh, we can get the accelerations. They wanted the accelerations for the for their answers. If you read the problem, we are doing problem 12, 141, and they want the accelerations. They, they want the uh, components at A and B. OK. Now, I haven't given you the, those equations. And I want to talk about them and we, we got time because uh, I got 35 minutes, I guess, uh, is what I have. <clears throat> Just had a senior moment. Let's see, what am I going to do here? We're trying to find those accelerations. Let me make some room here and we'll find them. Here goes. We already know it's dynamics class. Oh, wait a minute. I just erased one of my wonderful students. Thank you points. Put that back in there. They want to know. Let's do a first. At a they want to know the uh, tangential. 
and the normal acceleration component. You see that little N there? That tells you you're dealing with a component. See, see that little T there? They're asking for the tangential component of acceleration. Well, there's some equations in the front of your book, and I, I would like to explain those. And I think we might have time, we'll see. But in the flap of your book, this is given to be dv dt. And this is given to be v squared over rho. And the beauty is we found the rho. And we found the, uh, the v. It's given. v is 150. That's how fast it's going. So if you want the uh, normal component of acceleration, it's 150 squared divided by six ninety eight point eight. That should be the normal uh, component of the acceleration. Now, now the normal component or the, or the tangential component of acceleration is uh, zero. Because see, the tangential component is going this way in the, in the direction of your path. And your velocity is constant in that direction. And so, uh, the tangential component is the derivative of your velocity with respect to time in the tangential direction. Well, it's zero because the velocity isn't changing any in that tangential direction. So let's get this and see what it is. But I put that in your calculator. And I want to see if, if my students are with me here. I'm going to do this and I'm going to ask if that's what you got. See, I was wrong about another thing I was doing a minute ago, and you guys were right. Now, let, let me go to my uh, my class here. <laughs> There's only two of you left, so I'm just going to pick on you guys and feel sorry for you. Uh, Jackson, I tried to talk to you earlier and, and you left me. Are you are you with me now, Jackson? Yeah. Good. Excellent. Well, what'd you get for this, Jackson? The normal component of the acceleration. What'd you get? Uh, thirty-two point one nine. That's what I got. Thirty-two point two. Let's round it off. Yeah, thirty-two point two. Thirty-two point two feet per second squared. Hey, that I've heard of that number before, Jackson. Where, where have we heard of thirty-two point two? Uh, feet per second square. Where have we heard of that before? We've heard of it, haven't we? I know we've heard of 9.81. What about 32.2, Jackson? Where have we heard of that before? Um. <laughs> go, go ahead. What do you think? Not sure. You're not sure? Okay, that's fine. That's why you're here to learn. That's the acceleration of gravity. It's 32.2 feet per second squared on the Earth's surface. Well, it's an average value. In the uh, American customary unit system of feet, uh, what do they have? Feet, seconds, actually slugs for, for uh, uh, mass, uh, distances in feet, you know, the, it's the American stuff. It's not British. See, the, the British are, uh, what, meters and uh, 
newtons and all that. But see, uh, we, we've got uh, pounds and feet and, and inches and da -da, and that's what that is. Well, see, the acceleration, it's 32.2, .2, it's gravity. That's acceleration there. And in the tangential, they don't have any because it's not speeding up in, the, uh, in that direction at all. It's kind of like uh, when you throw that football, uh, that Hail Mary pass, and the sun is shining. If you look at the shadow of the ball going across the football field, 80-yard touchdown pass, that shadow moves at a constant speed. It doesn't speed up. Now, to be perfectly honest, it might slow down because of air friction, but you wouldn't notice it. But it doesn't speed up. There's no little rocket engine on that football making it go faster and faster. It goes at a constant speed and the shadow of the football on that Hail Mary pass moves at a constant speed from your five yard line to your, what, 95 yard line. Okay, now we're gonna do the, uh, it, it, uh, Point B. Here we go. Now at point B, we need, uh, well, we need the velocity because, see, to get the normal acceleration, don't we have to have the velocity? We have the radius of curvature. It's right, uh, where did it go? Well, we had it here. Uh, here we go. Look at here. We've got the radius of curvature at B. Yeah, we got that radius of curvature. If we could only get the velocity at B, we could do this. Okay, well, let's do that. How are we doing on time? Oh, we got. I don't know, 20 minutes at least. Okay, now here's the plan. The velocity in the X is constant. It's equal to 150. It doesn't change. The velocity in the Y, however, changes. It starts off it starts off with zero velocity in the y, and then it increases, and it's going to equal to the acceleration times the time. Now, I, I'm getting that from this equation here. I know you've seen it before. It's one of our it's one of our equations with the skull and crossbones on it that I talked to you about. Remember the skull and crossbones. But see, we have constant acceleration in the X and the Y. In the X, the acceleration is zero. In the Y, it's 32.2. .2. So we can use that. And in the Y, you can put a little Y there if you want. This is zero, so you don't need to worry about it. Well, that's where I got the equation. Now, if we could only get the time, we could get the velocity in the y. Well, we can get the time from here, guys. Look. We know what x is. It's 1447.9 feet. OK, plug that in, divide by 150, and we'll get the time. Here we go. 1447.9 divided by 150. I got the time. The time is 9.652 rounded off to seven seconds. See, this is feet per second squared. And that's nine point something. Hope you can read my writing. It's getting kind of messy there. All right, if you can read that, 
Put that in your calculator and we'll get the velocity in the y. Here goes. Uh, well, let's see. You take the 9.652 times 32.2. Did you get, well, actually it's minus. I suppose you should put a minus there because it's going down. Uh, I'm getting a minus uh, three, one, 310.8 feet per second. 310.82, that's good enough. Okay, well, now we can get the, uh, the, the the well we have the velocity and with that and rho we can get the normal acceleration let's do that oh gee i don't have enough room here hmm. well you guys are taking notes even you guys that are watching youtube are taking notes aren't you so i'll just make some room i'll make some room there and we're going to get the uh, the normal component of the acceleration at b now. We're doing b, and it's equal to v squared over rho. Well, v is um, three ten point eight. Now, when you square, I know it's minus, but when you square a negative, it comes out to be plus. And then what's rho? Well, at B, it's A509, A509.8. And we can get the acceleration at uh, the normal component of the acceleration at B. Here goes. Okay, I got an answer. I'm getting uh, 11.35 feet per second squared for the normal component of acceleration at B. Now we haven't done the tangential component of acceleration at uh, B, but let, let's let's look at the answer book and see if we agree with them first, and then we'll we'll finish off the problem. How are we doing? We're doing great. We got a little time. Go back to the answers and look at 12141 and we'll see how we're doing. 12, 12141. It says here it says here the uh, normal component of acceleration at A is 32.2. At A, the normal component of acceleration is 32.2. Yay, that's what the book says. They say the tangential component at A is zero. Yay, that's what the, the book agrees with us on the stuff at A. Now let's go to B. Now, oh, wait a minute. They said uh, the radius at A is 699. Now we said 698.8, the book says 699. Eh, we'll forgive them for rounding off, won't we? I think they did okay. Then the book says uh, the normal acceleration at B is 14. Now where's our, where's our normal acceleration at B? Uh, we didn't get the right answer, guys. Something bad happened. Uh, now they said the radius of curvature is 8,510. Well, we'll agree with that. That's 8,510. We agree with that. So there, there's, they, we must have fouled up on that 310.8 because they said the acceleration and the normal direction is 14. That's not 14. Maybe I plugged in the wrong number. Let me let me plug that in again, just a second. Maybe I did that wrong. Three, 310.8 squared divided by 8509.9. 
No, I did that right, but there, I think I did that wrong. So let, let me double check. Uh, oh, here's here's my problem. I see I see the problem. These are our components. I need some room here. Uh, yeah, goodbye to this stuff. We need room. Here we go. I need somebody out there to stay awake and help me. The V is equal to the square root of Vx squared plus Vy squared. And I've got the Vx, it's 150. And I've got the Vy, it's uh, 310.8. So V is equal to the square root of 150 squared plus uh, 310.8. I know it's minus, but when you square it, it's positive. And when you do that, you don't get 310.8. That's wrong. I made a mistake. And somebody could have gotten a nice thank you point for this. But we're going to we're going to see if we can get it. Plus 310.8 squared square root. I'm getting <clears throat> this value here is wrong. It's 345.1. Now, when you do that, I bet you this is wrong. I bet you'll get the answer they got. Let's try it. Square that, divide by 85.09.9. Boy, Jove, I'm getting 13.995. The, the answer book uh, at B just got 14. They said the normal acceleration component is 14 feet per second squared at B. Oh, that looks like 14 to me. And now the only thing I haven't done, oh gee, I'm running. Well, we got 10 minutes at least. Let's see if there's anybody still listening. We could finish off this problem. We're doing great. Yeah, look at here. We still have our our three musketeers there, Ashley, Jackson, and Mark. They haven't de departed. They're still with me. Good deal. It's kind of it's kind of a horrible mess there. That that whole board's a horrible mess. We never did get the tangential acceleration at B. Well, uh, I bet we could. I just need some room to work here. I don't know. Ah. Uh, How would we do that? We have, uh, well, where's my equation for why? Uh, yeah, here it is. It almost got erased. See, see this equation for y dx? And at b, that this, when you plug in the, uh, the x, which we figured out, I forgot what it was you get this. Did you guys know, <clears throat> make a little room here someplace. I need room. Did you guys know that the tangent of your angle is equal to the first derivative? Have you ever heard of this before? We can get the angle that this thing hits because we know that this is minus 2.072. We, we worked it out. 
the first derivative is minus 2.072. And we even ask, uh, I forget who it was, it might have been Ashley, what the units were for that. And they're, they're dimensionless, remember? Doesn't have any units. So I want to know the angle theta. Now, which angle is that? Well, you see where this thing comes in and lands kaplunk. There you go. It's this angle here. It's the, it's the dy over the dx. Okay, well, we're going to do that. Put in negative 2.072. What you're actually going to get is this angle here, but it's the same as that angle there. What What is a 2.072 negative arc tangent? Did you get, if you plug that in, you'll get a minus 64 something degrees. Theta is minus 64.24 degrees. And I want somebody to say they got that. I want to hear a yes or an uh-huh, something like that. Yep. Plug that in. Did you get minus 64.24? I'm waiting yes. for it. Yeah, I heard a yeah. Good going. Now we're going to get the tangential acceleration. Oh, gee, we only have five minutes left. Oh, that's okay. We'll just make some room here and we'll we'll get it. Okay, now here, here's this, here's this package that's coming in here, cut plunk, uh, plunk. There you go. If it if it landed in the ocean, it would go cause, cause splash. They would splash. There it goes. And this angle here is uh, sixty. 4.24 degrees. If you're talking about this angle here, it's a minus 64.24 degrees because it's below the x-axis. What's that there? I can't read my own writing. Oh, that was a splash. That's what it was. But we know the angle. <clears throat> now, now let's put the acceleration in there. During the whole time this thing is falling, the acceleration is just, does that show up? Yeah, that shows up. The acceleration is 32.2. We know that. Go outside after class and throw a rock. And as that rock goes in a parabola during the entire trip, <clears throat> It has an acceleration of 32.2 feet per second squared going down. You know that. You know when you throw a rock, that's the acceleration, right? Okay, well now what we need is the component. We need this component here. Well, that component there is called the tangential component. See, it also has a it also has a normal component, but we got that. It's 14. We did that. And those of you that stayed awake during this whole thing, uh, I showed you how to get that. But how do you get this? Well, it's not hard if you took trigonometry in school. Uh, you see that angle there? I'll tell you what it is. What, what's, one, uh, what's 90? Minus 64.24. Let me see what that is. See if I can subtract. Mm, I think I did that right. See that little bitty angle right there? That's 25.76 degrees, that little bitty angle. And this tangential acceleration should be 32.2 cosine of 25.76 degrees. Okay. 
Now, let's see who we got here. We've got uh, some wonderful students that doggedly stayed with me the whole time. Proud of you. I want you three guys to plug that in, and I'm going to do it, and we're going to see what the tangential uh, acceleration is. Here goes. Okay, anybody got it? Uh, sing it out. What'd you get? 29.0. That's what I got. Not only that, that's what the book got. If you look at the answers in the book, they're usually right. I'd say probably 95% of the time. They're not always right. But uh, I did that and I got 29. 0.0 feet per second squared. That's the tangential component of the acceleration at B. Okay, well, uh, technically our time is up, but since it, we're, this is so goofed up today with the uh, Zoom being out, let me steal five minutes from you to uh, tell you one last thing. By the way, I, I graded some of your homework. If you go to Blackboard and look on uh, the grade book, you should have some grades in there. Has anybody done that? Have, has anybody looked on Blackboard to see uh, if they have any grades on, on, on their grade book? Yes, sir. S somebody, if you have, say yes. Yeah, it shows the grade for the first assignment for me. Yeah, see, I've been, I've been, I'm not totally lazy. I, I've graded some of your papers. Good for you. Okay, let me show you one last thing. Let me make some room here. We'll say goodbye to 12141. And this is going to be on uh, YouTube. You can watch it again. If you didn't understand it, watch it over again. But, but you know, the, uh, the position vector in your X and Y coordinates, we talked about this, is equal to that. But the position vector in your normal tangential coordinate system is equal to that. That's the position vector. Did you know that any vector whatsoever can be written as its magnitude times a uh, direction? Well, that's what vectors are. They're, they're a magnitude and a direction. Vectors, have you ever heard that before? Vectors have magnitude and direction. Now, if, if you wanted to get the velocity in x, y, what you have to do is you have to take the derivative of your position vector with respect to time. And one way of writing it is just uh, like this. The dot is just a lazy person's uh, way of writing the first derivative with respect to time. Now, if you want the velocity in, in the normal tangential unit system, see, this is x, y. This is normal tangential. And uh, next time we might even get into the polar radial transverse stuff. But, but to get the velocity 
in normal tangential, you have to take the derivative of your position vector with respect to time. Right? Now, here's the, here's the tricky part. The position vector changes. Remember that package that was flying meow uh, kaplunk? Well, the position vector, here's your position vector. It's changing all the time. There's your position vector. It's changing. Not only that, but the, the tangential unit vector is changing. See, here, this was the tangential unit vector, but you know what? Here, the tangential unit vector is different because it's going in a different direction. And here, the tangential unit vector is like that. And here, the tangent. Remember, we did that and we got an angle there. I forget what it was. Dang it, what was it? What was that angle? Was it 57 degrees or something? I don't remember. I just have one last thing to tell you guys. Give me about two or three more minutes. I'm stealing this time from you. And you're going to read your book and you're going to do your homework. When, when's it due? Thursday? And I think you had some homework due last night at midnight. I haven't graded all those yet, but I will. Here's what I want to tell you. I got about two or three minutes I'm going to steal from you. These are both changing. This is a product of two variables. And when you take the derivative of a product, does anybody know how to take the derivative of a product? Let me go to one of my wonderful students here. Uh, let's go to Jackson. Jackson, what rule do you use to take the product and to take the derivative of a product? Do you know the name of the rule? to take a, the derivative of a product, Jackson? It's called the product rule, right? That's it, that's it, he's got right. it. It's a... He's got it, you use the product rule. Good going, Jackson. So what you do is you go R times the derivative of this unit vector with respect to time plus dr dt times the unit vector with respect to time. You take the first one times the derivative of the second one plus the derivative of the first one times the second one. That, that's called the product rule. And we'll talk about that more on Wednesday and hopefully Zoom will work for us. Okay, here, uh, any last comments or questions from anybody? Well, okay, uh, work on your homework, read your book, and I look forward to seeing hopefully the whole class on Wednesday. Okay, guys, bye-bye. Adios.